is part two of chapter number two. Um, in this chapter, will be uh, in this uh, video, I mean, we will be uh, continuing with uh, paper chromatography that we have started in the previous video. Um, in the previous video, uh, we gave the example of investigating solutes in black ink. And also we said that one of the other uses of chromatography is to investigate uh, colors in a colored uh, cloth and so on. And so we'll start off this video by um, investigating colors uh, in an orange cloth. Um, okay, so step number one is extract the dye. In the previous video, when we gave the example of black ink, it was already, you know, ink. It was ready to be put on the um, on the paper and so on. But here we need to extract it first uh, from the cloth. So you put pieces of the cloth in ethanol, um, and then uh, you cover it in a beaker, and then you cover it uh, with a watch glass to reduce the evaporation of ethanol, and heat it using a water bath. And a water bath, of course, so that... Um, because you know that uh, as you know as you all know ethanol is flammable and so on and so um you decant um what for those of you that don't um know what decant is it's a term which means uh poor um yellow i don't think yellow is that clear pour uh the liquid part off pour the liquid part off so um after like uh, heating using the water bath, you're gonna have an orange solution with the cloth. No, we just want the solution. So you decant it, that's only take the liquid part and put it in an evaporating dish. And then again, using the water bath, you're gonna evaporate to concentrate. And then we're gonna have the uh, dark orange uh, solution. Okay, um, now step number two is investigate the solutes in the orange cloth just like the previous video by chromatography as ethanol is soaked up it dissolves the solutes in the orange dye and travels up the solutes adsorb as i said adsorb is not absorb okay adsorb on the paper forming a clear chromatogram and um um, the precautions that we talked about is uh, have a drop, concentrated drop of the uh, solution on the pencil line so that you have a clear chromatogram. We talked about having the level of the solvent below the pencil line so that the solutes don't get diluted and so on. So that was pretty easy. Now we're going to um, talk about something else and that is investigating colorless sol solutes in proteins or carbohydrates. So... Um, whether it was the black ink or the orange cloth, the two examples that we discussed in this video and the previous video, these were colored solutes. So what can we do if the solutes were colorless? Okay, uh, and these are present in proteins and carbohydrates. First, before we get into that, you have to know that proteins and carbohydrates break down into simpler substances by water. That is, proteins plus water give you amino acids and carbohydrates plus water give you sugars. Uh, so, amino acids or sugars are colorless. So, they could become visible by uh, something known as the locating agent. And there are many uh, locating agents out there, but the most common ones that you're going to come across in the exam and so is uh, ninhydrin, iodine vapor, and UV light. Okay, so let's get into an example to have a more clear understanding of that. So, investigating amino acids in beef. So, step number one, we're going to extract the amino acids, just like we extracted the dye a few uh, moments ago. We're going to extract the amino acids. So you put the minced meat in acidified water and you acidify it using drops of uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4. And then you heat, you heat this and then you decant, decant, that is pour only, uh, pour off the liquid part and take this liquid part in a beaker and add barium sulfate powder. Um, what's the use of barium sulfate powder? It clears up the solution for you and it's, it settles down and clears up leaving like a clear solution. Uh, settles down I mean leaving a clear solution. So here as you can see is clear amino acids. Now decant of these we need the clear amino acids in an evaporating dish and again evaporate to concentrate and you get concentrated amino acids. Now 
You separate the amino acids by chromatography, the same exact process as water is soaked up. It dissolves amino acids and travels up. The amino acids adsorb on paper, forming a clear chromatogram with the help. Now, here's the most important sentence in this whole thing. With the help of locating, of a locating agent. Use nanhydrin, uh, use uh, the UV light, the... Um, what else? What was the third one? Gosh, my memory. Uh, iodine vapor, yeah. Okay, now, um, in the orange... Um, in the orange... Um, in, in the orange cloth example, now we investigated and then we saw the chromatogram and we saw that there is yellow and there is red and all of these salutes. So just by the uh, mere interpretation by sight. But now when it comes to amino acids, you know, there are like tons of uh, kinds of amino acids and we want to know which exact, we want to identify the exact amino acids that are found in the beef. So we are going to use like a more scientific way, like rather than just by sight identifying. Um, um, that is comparing, um, that's actually also not the, the most scientific thing. The next one, method number two, is more scientific because this also involves uh, sight and so on. That is, compare the chromatogram that you got, the one that you got. Let me get the pen here. I hope you guys are following. Okay, so uh, the one we got, the one we got, you or we, <laughs> whoever, the one uh, you got... Um, with chromatograms of pure amino acids. Now, in the lab, there are chromatograms of pure amino acids. Like, um, let's say there is amino acid A, B, C, and D. In the lab, you'll have like a chromatogram of each amino acid. And the amino acid which travels the same distance is the one present in the beef. So now that's A, B, C, and D, and F, the ones that are available in, um, these are chromatograms of different pure amino acids that are available in the lab. And that's the one you got. So the one you got has this, has A, obviously, B, no, it doesn't have, C, yes, the same level, uh, D, no, E, no, F. So the beef contains A, C, and F. So you compared it with chromatograms of, ouch, that, I thought that was the highlighter, okay. <laughs> so you compared it with the chromatograms of pure amino acids. And logically, the one which travels the same distance is the one present in our beef. Great. Now, to the second method, which is more scientific, is by measuring something known as the retention uh, value. It is RF factor. Um, now, the, how it's calculated is the distance from the baseline, that, that is the pencil line, traveled by the solute over the distance from the baseline traveled by the solvent which means this is the chromatogram that you uh that you got okay that you obtained and so solute number one it traveled this distance you measure it from the baseline it's really important from the baseline and uh so uh, so is the uh, d2 and d3 all from the baseline um and D is the distance from the baseline traveled by the solvent till the end. Okay, and so this over this gives you a value. What's that value? It's called the retention value. And every compound, whether it's a dye, a pigment, an organic substance, ouch, I, I keep thinking that that's the highlighter. Okay, maybe it's a good idea to switch to the highlighter. Yes, in the yellow. So in our case, it's an organic substance, the amino acids. So every compound have a specific RF. Just like we said that every pure amino acid have a certain chromatogram, every, um, every, um, every, um, yeah, every, okay, sorry. Every dye, pigment, or organic substance have a certain uh, retention value. For every specific solvent, of course, and for every specific solvent concentration, because it's going to differ if it's in a different solvent, because maybe in a in a, another solvent it will travel more or less, and so on. Uh, so I think I'm going to end this video here. Um, I hope that you uh, I delivered like um, the material in an easy, simple way. Uh, I know my illustrations aren't the best out there, <laughs> but I'm trying. Um, anyways, um, I think that chapter number two, that is the experimental techniques, will uh, have another two parts, part three and four, 
where we will be discussing um, uh, purity of substances and the importance of purity in everyday life and how to determine if a substance is pure or not and the different purification methods. Uh, so yeah. Um, anyways, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you for watching and see you in the next video.